Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 70 of Be With Me. And we are in a passage of a great destruction and second coming of Christ. And I got to tell you, is I got the biggest kick out of this day of the Lord. And the, the sections are, there's going to be two sections we're going to talk about. We're going to talk today about the destruction of Jerusalem and the uh, what great things mothers are and the history of, of Israel. And then we're going to talk about the second coming of man. This is all in Luke chapter 21. Uh, this is a passage where Jesus is talking about the end times. So he the the view becomes very forward looking, at least to 70 AD. That's when Jerusalem was uh, destroyed by the Romans and probably way, way past that. And then it looks all the way to the second coming. All right, let me read and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, and hopefully you'll get a giggle with me at the end. This is Luke chapter 21, and we're going to start in verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know it is desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart. And let not those who are out of the country, out in the country, enter it. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. He may be talking about the time in Romans chapter 11, where uh, there's these historical dispensations where Israel is the favored people of God, and then uh, they trespass, and then the Gentiles start to come in uh, in the time of Paul and in the church age. And the disobedience of the Jews has, uh, the good news is, it is the time of reconciliation for the world, for the non-Jews. So they, that's described in Romans 11 as wild shoots being grafted into the kingdom. And we're sharing in this nourishing root of this history of God. But then it says, don't be proud. God has the power to graft in again uh, to their own olive tree, the Jews. So this may be happening. This may be the time this referred to. Uh, essentially, scholars disagree and they don't know. Um, I also wanted to point out the the pregnant women in here, alas for pregnant women. What's the big deal about women? Well, it, I think it's a, a tribute to mother. When a, when a mother's pregnant, it's a commitment, not a commitment for nine months. It's a commitment for, you know, 19 years or 90 years till you die. It's a symbol of perseverance and it's the long view and um, it's the beginning of a commitment, uh, not the end of a commitment. So, I just wanted to admire mothers. I think that's kind of a, a little side thing in the in the passage. But this destruction of, of uh, Jerusalem, certainly it's a day of vengeance. It's a, it's a day of wrath, and uh, it's the Lord's prerogative to do so. All right, let me read this, the last part. And think about this. Think about the things that are happening in nature and the happening that, that are happening in the nations. Here we go. This is verse 25. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of the nations in perplexity because of the roaring sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is, is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Straighten up and raise your head because your redemption is drawing near. In other words, believers, Christians, when all this terrible stuff is happening, you're supposed to straighten your back, raise your head and say, hey, my ride is here. So listen what happens on the, in the nation or nature. There's signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars. The sea roars, something about the waves. Um, the heavens are being shaken. So, so physical stuff is 
in a way that it's never been before. And so then people are responding appropriately, fainting with fear, fainting with foreboding uh, of what is coming, that there's this foreboding of something is happening, something is happening, and then it happens. And that is that you see that people, the whole world, when he comes back, there's not going to be any uh, wonder about it. Everybody's going to know at the same time trumpets are going to be blaring. That's in First uh, Thessalonians. When these things begin to take place, or uh, I'm sorry, when the Son of Man comes, he's coming in a cloud, he's coming with power, he's coming with great glory. So what is glory? In, in my opinion, glory is the character and the characteristics of God being uh, displayed. He's always had it. And when he shows it to us, then he is glorified. So this is clearly one of those times when uh, the otherworldliness of the Lord and his full armamentarium of powers is being displayed. So this is my favorite part. And honestly, I laughed out loud. And I know it's ironic to laugh out loud in a section where the the Lord is coming and there's fear and foreboding and perplexity. And I just thought this was a hilarious juxtaposition. Now, all this stuff is happening. The sun, moon, and stars, waves, seas, people fainting, foreboding. And what are believers supposed to do? Verse 28. Now, when these things began to take place, straighten up, raise your head, because your redemption is drawing near. Just this confidence and hope and assurance that believers have to look up amidst this crazy time where nature's going crazy, sights are things you never see before, and then Jesus come back, and what we what believers say is, "Hey, my ride's here." I hope you join me in that um, in that moment. It's going to be a great day for the believers uh, when he comes back. Thanks for listening.